you know, Aaron Rodgers isn't expected to play tonight, so maybe Brett could get in there. For a guy that played with such passion, it didn't take long for Brett Favre to get emotional last night during his Hall of Fame speech. A career that took 20 years to complete took 36 minutes to encapsulate. The heart of his talk centered around the one family member, though, that could not be there. Favre's father, Irv, who passed away in 2003, one day before he played his most brilliant game on Monday Night Football and was the driving force behind the quarterback for his entire career. Pedro, it has been a tumultuous time in our country. News headlines have been dominated by the division between cops and community. But in Washington Heights, what's known as the drug capital of New York City, the people and the police decided it was time to take back their neighborhood in this week's SC Featured. This year marks the 28th anniversary of the Michael Busick Little League, which is also the badge number Officer Busick wore for the 34th Precinct. As for Washington Heights, the neighborhood's crime levels dropped 74% from 88 to 2015. There were 75 murders in the Heights in 88. Last year, there were four. Con starts tonight. Right there. Uh, this is coming up, top of the hour. Huge deal. Yankees have called a press conference involving Alex Rodriguez. Some feel that this could be uh, a retirement, could be retiring at the end of the season. We don't know. Uh, it has not leaked out, but we are going to find out at the top of the hour. We're going to take you there live. That is inside the press room there at Yankee Stadium. Football's back. Back here in Sports Center, Diners Me, Kerry Chow. Kerry, is there a coach in college football who has created more headlines than this guy? The season hasn't even started. This guy has really served it up perfectly to those millennial recruits out there. I see what you're talking about. I mean, he's appeared in a music video with the rapper Bailey. He's had sleepovers with recruits. Yes. He's even tree houses. His... I think he's yeah. gone up in tree houses. Oh yeah, out. exactly. <laughs> he's taken the team out to Florida for spring break, much to the SEC's dismay. He's cool with the kids. He's cool with the parents because he wears those non-threatening khakis. <laughs> now Harbaugh sits down with our very own Gene Wojciechowski and reveals what drives him and whether or not he can still play. Gomez, working quite the long day. I want to talk <laughs> about Arietta. We'll get to that. We'll get to a lot of things. But first. Yeah. The New York Yankees have some news. You just got a text message. It just came two minutes ago that they have announced an 11 a.m. Eastern press conference with Alex Rodriguez. So, uh, you know, I... Pitchers, we showed you the stat before. In the last 25, Kluber has a 1.46 ERA in his five starts. The other Indian starters, a 1.46 ERA. So, I know you were at Yankee Stadium yesterday, as yes. we mentioned. What are the players saying about that situation? They're saying that it's just basically a slump. It's like when a hitter goes into a slump. Then an attitude thing. But just... it, the Dodgers are on board with yeah. all of this so far, by the okay. way. Okay. All right. So board. just to, just to recap, the, the the news tonight: the New York Yankees press conference tomorrow morning at yeah. 11 a.m. with apparently a Rod included in that press conference. We're not exactly exactly sure why they're hosting this press conference, but uh, Pedro Gomez is going to be on top of it for Sports Center here over the next few hours. Pedro, thank you. All right, Dinah about the rules of fandom, Diana. The Rams are back in L.A. They're practicing at the Coliseum for the first time since 1994. But here's the deal. I'm not sure how to feel about them. I Why? grew up in Southern California. Mm -hmm. I love the Rams. They go to St. Louis. I stopped rooting for them. Now they're back in L.A. What am I supposed to do? Pretend like nothing happened and just root for them all over again? Forgiveness, Carrie. Forgiveness. I mean, look at it this way. Who are you rooting for in Connecticut where you live now? Hey, the Waterbury has amazing sunsets. Anyway, go Rams. They're back practicing at the Coliseum, back at home for the first time in years. Carrie supports them, and the players know how special this is. Me and Woody, who played with Favre when he was a Jet, and of course our NFL insider Ed Werder is here with us as well. Um, let's try to start with you. You played, as I mentioned, with the Jets, with Brett Favre back in 2008. Give me a favorite memory of Brett Favre, and what was he about? Was well, meeting, Eric Mangini's kind of talking things over, and Brett was like, Coach, coach, you're forgetting something. And uh, he's like, what are you talking about? And Brett gets up and he like introduces. Ed, you've covered this guy for so many years. What's, what, what do you think of when you think of Brett Favre? Well, let's talk about how he got to That's a great story out of both of you. And then I heard an interview by him, the greatest game, the game where he had the most pressure. And you think about all the games that Brett Favre has played, the Super Bowls and all that, is the one he played after his dad died because mm. he didn't want to let his dad down. And as he we didn't. know what happened in that game, <laughs> he sure didn't. Uh, Ed and Damien will be back later on in Sports Center to share some stories about some of the other big names of the guys going into Canton, along with Brett Favre. You know what I love by that? It was just so organic, the way that whole thing just bloomed. This is Gene Wojciechowski, everybody. You recognize him. 
Gene, this is so incredible. We saw a little snippet of it yesterday to tease us, but you recently sat down with Michigan head football coach, former, former Niners head coach, former Colts quarterback, Jim Harbaugh. Had a nice conversation with him. How'd that go? It went about 45 minutes. It was about 45 wow. 